This is Infinite Spaghetti, a guided tour of the cosplay and creative archives with your host, Ethan Minsker. Part of the Project Nerd Podcast Network. I'm Ethan Minsker. This is the very first episode of Infinite Spaghetti. Today for our flagship episode, we have a very special guest, Michael Nightmag Wilson. I'm going to bring him on and have him correct me. Yeah, yeah, I'm really going to correct you. Please, Holy dear, I'm sorry. I'm, I should have asked you that. Night Mage. 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 Night Mage, sorry. Yeah. Let me do that again. Rewind. Today on the special first episode of Infinite Spaghetti, let me introduce <laughs> Michael Night Mage Wilson out of Ohio. <laughs> what are you drinking there? What is that? Oh, well, this is a little bit of um, uh, Bird Dog Whiskey, Apple, and Ginger Ale. First um, off, so you yeah. have a beautiful haircut. Well, thank you, thank you. It's my that's yeah, that's my COVID hair. My my passion is cosplay, so that's primarily why I'm here. You're talking to me is about cosplay. Uh, I've been cosplaying since 2012. Um, that's not my day job though. My day job is in law enforcement, a deputy sheriff with the Mahoney County Sheriff's Office in Ohio since 2000. So actually going on 21 years now. I'm old. Do a lot of people in the um in the department? How do they react? to the to your cosplay personas and stuff like that everyone knows about it when i first started it was a different reaction i mean right off the bat they'll just say like cops are dicks right cops are just <laughs> jerks <laughs> like we're always just you know have that kind of personality but they're very supportive so when i first started cosplaying it was a lot of joking a lot of you know talking about wearing tights and that type of stuff but uh once they actually saw the the charity work I was doing, um, the places I was going, the people I was meeting, it became, hey, how was your weekend? Or, you know, tell me a story. And then it went to, hey, my kid's having a birthday party. Can you stop by? And then it came to, you know, there's a convention coming up. Can you help me with a costume or can I borrow a costume? So um, I think as geek culture kind of evolved, people's uh, perception and people's uh, willingness to accept it has evolved too. Um, so yeah, they're very, 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 very supportive. They're supportive, but you're also, you know, sort of making them supportive by introducing it to them, which is like, I always feel like when people have these kind of like world differences and, and views, it's always because they're not introduced to somebody different. So yeah, you're like making the, the department more inclusive in a lot of ways. Well, yeah, I mean, and and it, it also has to do with with the things that's going on today. Like, um, I would just say that like the Marvel movies, uh, with them becoming so popular, um, people are now starting to realize that wow, like, I can I can let my geek flag fly, and I can, you know, I can show that I really like this type of stuff, and no one's going to judge me for it. Um, and then it's also just opening doors. So you know, people watch the Marvel movies, and they're interested in that. So now they want to read the comics and they want to see the backstory. And then it just, it's a rabbit hole. They just go further and further until then they're dressing up. So um, it's, 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 it's kind of me, but then it's also the society too. Okay. No naked photos though. Well, is that on your Facebook? You never know. All right. Well, look, you know, whatever brings more viewers, I can't promise. <laughs> if I find some of your naked photos, it might bring more views and likes. You know, got to do it. But no, okay, I'll skip that. But I don't think that's on your Facebook. You know, give us a little background on where you're picking your costumes and concepts for this. You know, there's no rhyme or reason, actually. First and foremost, I just have to like what I'm going to be doing. So as long as I think I'm going to have fun making this costume, that's the first thing that matters to me. So I could love the character but don't think I'm going to have fun making the costume, I'm not going to do it. And, and on the flip side, I don't even have to like the character, but if I'm, you know, I'm going to have fun making it, then I'm going to do it. So as long as I think I'm going to have fun, challenge myself creatively, then, then I'm going to do it. I will say that it is fun to bring those old school characters, the characters I grew up with, to life. So like anytime I'm doing like G.I. Joe or, or Thundercats or, or anything like that, Destro, that was a really fun one to do. Just it kind of brings up that that nostalgia. It, it's fun to see people kind of like you said, like it's in your wheelhouse. So when you see a character, you're like, oh my god, yeah, I grew up with that character. It's it's fun to see that type of reaction. So as long as I think I'm gonna have fun, that's the only only prerequisite for me doing the costume. 
And now, now, sir, for the costumes, how long does it take you to make like one like this? I'm assuming you, like, are you making the sword in every item of this, or you're like yeah. sourcing some of the materials from other it places? It depends on the costume. That one, the Vampire Hunter D. Um, I made the sword for that one, but you know, I just did a, a Baron Zemo today, where I actually bought the sword from Spirit Halloween. So it depends on the character. It depends on um, how I want it to look whether I, you know, I feel like making it or whether I feel like buying a, a prop for it. But typically it takes me anywhere between a day to four days to make a costume. I think the longest has ever taken me was five days. That was RoboCop. And that was only because I didn't have a pattern. So I was strictly just going off a of freehand foam, just foam freehanding it and went to town. So yeah, five days is my longest. Typically though, like I said, about two to two to three days. With this, like with the armor, you're you're casting this, or you were saying like foam. You're like carving the foam and then yeah, painting yeah. it. Or primarily, I use foam, and that's the second thing with me. So I am I'm kind of known for being fast with my builds, but I I'd also say five days is amazingly fast. I mean, I spend <laughs> weeks on projects. So well, I'm also a budget builder, and so I always tell people when they're starting off cosplaying kind of know it, exactly what you want to do. Each costume, I set a budget. So my max budget for any costume is roughly $250. I will not go over $250 for any costume. There's no reason to do that to me. On average, I'll spend anywhere between $60 to $150. But $250 is, $250 is my budget. I always tell people, know exactly what you want to get into and why you're doing it. So for me, I am primarily a... 10 foot rule cosplayer which means 10 feet away and in pictures i think it's going to look pretty amazing but it's not going to be costume contest quality it's because i'm not entering a costume contest for that costume so if i'm doing that if i'm entering a costume contest or something like that then i'm going to put a little bit more time and effort into it but if i'm just going to make a costume to wear just for fun just to wear to a convention for for six hours I don't need to put that much money into it. I don't need to put that much time into it. As long as I think I can look at myself in a mirror and say, wow, I think I kind of like this. Take a few photos and people are going to like it. Cool. That's all that matters. So know exactly what it is that you want to get into. If it's just for fun, kind of relax a little bit. Cut a little, you know, cut a few corners. You can go a little bit faster. You can use cheaper materials. But if you're going to enter a costume contest, then you might want to put your, you know, your, your better foot forward. I'm putting this picture up because this is such an awesome diehard Bruce Willis. Like when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. Now I'm looking at it. I realize that's a cardboard box. It that is. You probably spray painted the inside of. Like yep. the photographs are also really good. Do you have like somebody who's doing this for you? The No. Um, so I actually just self-shoot everything. Specifically, this photo was a lot of fun. I have a thing like when it comes to Halloween and Christmas – I'm always in that mode where I have to do Halloween costume, like Halloween movies or whatever. Same thing with Christmas. So this year I did Die Hard and Turbo Man from Jingle All the Way, Home Alone. But this one, I was just that's really the only photo I wanted was just the the cardboard box photo. So I just I had a whole bunch of cardboard in the garage spray paint at the inside was smart enough not to use a real lighter so i just used the zippo and then actually the flame is just photoshopped in you're just jumping in the air getting a photograph yeah everyone is like do you photoshop yourself like going up I'm like no actually i just jump usually it takes me probably about 10 jumps to get like a good a good jumping photo that's why i don't skip leg day somebody creating like say in new york city who has a very tiny apartment and you out in ohio like i'm guessing you have a large amount of space you're in your work studio now right well i didn't for a long time uh for a long time i just had my living room um we were in a little small two-bedroom apartment and so literally all my crafting was just done on my in my living room then we bought a house and now i do have my craft room yeah, so I mean, I do have my craft room. It's not like huge, but um, it's definitely a bigger space. Uh, so I just have a bunch of like my helmet props. The yellow one, is that um, from uh, the mask? It is from the mask. Bang, one point for me. <laughs>
the Ghostbusters pack that. And that's my workspace. So it's primarily you're using, like, I'm guessing, like a glue gun, which I saw over there. Yeah, and that's, like, that's primarily it. That's like foam, my number one tool is a glue gun, hot glue. Foam, spray paint. Is a lot of this recycled materials or? Again, it depends. It really depends on what it is I'm making. I like to repurpose and reuse as much materials as I can. Again, I'm cheap. But foam, foam is my number one thing to use because it's cheap, it's easy to use, it's easy to paint, it's very lightweight. So yeah, foam is my primary my primary medium. I use a little bit of uh, thermoplastic, but it can get more expensive. Tina likes my suit. Well, you should go see my film, Man in Camo, on Amazon Prime and everywhere else available. I hope you show your new judge uh, badge, hi <laughs> She sent me a care package from Ireland. Oh, nice. And... International. Oh, wow. That's my, that's my Judge Dread badge. That's kind of like perfect for you and your day job. Uh, yeah, it is actually. It's awesome. Are you making one of those costumes? Um, I actually already have a Judge Dread. Um, Judge Dread was one of the ones, kind of the catalyst that made me decide that it this does not have to be an expensive hobby. So when I first was going to do Judge Dread, there's a few cosplayers that asked me if I want to join their Judge Dread group. And this was when the the movie Dread had just came out. They were basically doing like movie accurate costumes to that, right? Here's the thing. There's there's certain fandoms where you can just get stuck in and I'm trying to be so accurate that you're just spending hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars on the costume. Judge Dread is one of those. So easily 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 from the suit to the the armor and stuff you're looking at close to like fifteen hundred dollars for for a costume so once i started um looking into it and and buying stuff i'm like you know what this this honestly is not for me because i'm not gonna i'm gonna wear it for what again six hours and then take it off so what i'm not doing that so i i put it on the back burner and i came back to it probably about a year later and I ended up uh, doing the the um, Sylvester Stallone comic book version of Judge Dredd, and ended up spending roughly like seventy bucks for the costume. I thought it looked awesome, and so that was the thing that kind of made me realize that you know what, I I can do this my way. I don't have to live up to anyone else's standards. I don't have to try and impress anyone with anything. I'm just gonna cosplay my way, and if people love it, great. If they don't, I will. So it's still okay. And I think that's the best attitude to have when whatever kind of creator you are. I was looking for the Judge Dredd, but I came across RoboCop first, so I wanted to show that. As you're doing this, like, have you met kids and stuff that you've kind of like had these inspirational interactions with? I mean, like, so that's how I started with cosplay. It was this, the charity aspect. Halloween of 2011. I wanted to be Green Lantern. I, I'd never been to a convention. I, I didn't really know anything about cosplaying, but um, I just love dressing up for Halloween. So I went as Green Lantern. I didn't know how to sew or anything, so my girlfriend helped me put that costume together. Went out to the bars, had fun. Well, a buddy of mine was doing a Relay for Life event, uh, Cancer Walk. And so he said, hey, you know, can you, can you come by as Green Lantern? Had fun. And then from that, I got asked to do another event, and another, and another, and just kind of snowballed from there. So, like, 2012, that's all I was doing was charity events. Um, every weekend was just a, I was just a <laughs> different charity event. And then I went to my first convention at the end of 2012. And then it just kind of, again, snowballed from there from between doing conventions and then trying to, you know, still do the charity work and then raising money for different charities. The interactions with, with people, with the charity aspect is it's a different kind of special because you can see that, I don't know, you can see exactly how your art is more, is more impactful to people. The one story I will always tell, I was doing a charity event and it was an anti-bullying event and it was for a school. It was about 250 kids. It was assembly style and I was Batman. And so did the event. It was awesome. Uh, About two weeks later, uh, one of the teachers called me and said, Hey, kids loved it. They're still talking about Batman. But there's one kid specifically who just kept saying, you know, I can't believe Batman was here, blah, blah. The thing was, it was a predominantly white school. 
and and the one kid was one of the only black kids in the school. He just kept saying, "Oh my god, I can't believe like Batman looks like me," and and that means I can be Batman too. And and he was just so excited about Batman looking like him. And it that's when it hit me that man, like representation in 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 this really does matter, and it really does make a difference. You never really honestly know who is paying attention to you and who you're inspiring. So I always tell people, seriously, even if you don't see it or hear it, trust me, someone is is taking notes and someone's someone's watching you and someone's being inspired by exactly what you do. You're making me tear up. <laughs> don't tear up. No, that's a good story. So I hope that some point later, if kids are watching this, and they feel so inspired, I would suggest, and I didn't ask you before, but they should reach out to you. You Absolutely. seem like I, you'd be a good mentor and advice advisor for this. I mean, it's not like somebody's teaching you. You're figuring this out. I mean, like it, this encompasses more than just creativity. This encompasses science, math, and education. So, you know, when you're making a costume, whether you realize it or not, you're not just making a costume. You're figuring out how to engineer this costume, how to make this from scraps, how to make this from something very affordable. And you're doing it yourself. So yeah, that's absolutely great knowledge that you know should be something that's taught in school because you, you got to imagine that there's all these kids that are like, what are your options? You go home and you look at screens, right? right. You spend most of your time looking at the screen. You're doing something in the physical world you're doing something that's physical, and then you're bringing that to other people and meeting them in the actual physical world. Would this be something that's valuable? Absolutely, because A, they're going to have to use their mind. They're going to have to research things. They're going to have to study. Being somebody who's dyslexic, I always found that the best way to engage myself and other people is to do things you're passionate about. And if you're going to learn all of these things that are beneficial for you in the long run, it should be something that you're focused on and passionate about. And clearly you are. And I got to say that prior to you doing the cosplay stuff, the version of you now means that you have learned so many skills that you could be a prop master. You could be, you know, like doing costumes and you could be doing independent films. I mean, there's so much knowledge that you've gained just from doing that yourself that, yeah, I mean, I would say if there was a kid out there, who was so inclined, they should join your Instagram and message you for advice, whether you're asking for that or not. No, honestly, I, I do welcome it. I, I, I um, Sometimes I get mad at myself because I, I can't keep up with messages. I always honestly welcome people just to message me and ask, you know, questions. Honestly, even just to talk sometimes if you just need someone to talk to. But you, you are right. I think cosplay definitely is. It's a gateway to other avenues therapeutic it's a good outlet so much more than the idea of dressing up it's uh, yeah but for me it's all about the process like it doesn't matter what you're picking as long as you're taking the effort to do it that's hugely amazing I'm yeah and that, that is actually one one thing a lot of people that's the first thing when they find out like I, i'm in law enforcement they're like wait you're a cop you actually have a like a like a profession and a career i'm like yeah like and I mean, honestly, 90% of cosplayers do, but sometimes um, cosplayers don't really want to show that side either because they they can't because of work reasons or they just um, they just don't think people are going to be interested in seeing themselves as a as a normal person. But that's kind of what I want to do. I want to show that, dude, I'm 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 just as normal as you. So if I can do this, yeah, anyone can do this. I get a lot of like messages from people saying that they feel isolated creatively because they have to have like a day job and a normal thing. And I go, that's first off, I have a normal day job and everybody I know does even like, you know, the filmmakers I meet at film festivals, what you should be taking from this is that you can be a normal person, have a normal job, but also at the same time, pursue and chase your passions. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like, absolutely. I mean, I believe you're on this planet once you're gone, you're dust. You might as well have a good time while you can. Right? Absolutely. It's a very social hobby, but just full of socially awkward people. I'm paused on your uh, Tim Curry um, Rocky Horror Picture Show image because I was a diehard Rocky Horror fan. I went for like 
two years when I was like 13. It was my excuse to get out of the house and stay out past 12 o'clock. So that's, that's how I get my ideas, honestly. Like something will pop in my head and I'm stuck with the idea. I'm like, okay, got to do it. The next day, got to do it. So this group one, this is, uh, is that cardboard? No, that's foam. Honestly, don't worry about failing. If you're worrying about failing, then you're not going to try as hard. So just just go for it. Just do things. You never know what you're going to be successful at. When it comes to cosplay, I think the biggest thing right now is people really believing that they can't do something for a specific reason. Because you can't be this character because you're not the right color. You can't do this character because you're not the right size. Whatever it is. Cosplay really honestly is nothing more than just your fan art of of this character. So, you know, you take you take any character, you take Batman. Batman has been seen a hundred different ways, depending on the writer, director, artist, you know, however that person's doing it is how he envisions that person. Don't you, you know, cosplayers are kind of artists in their own right. So don't worry about about re- replicating someone else's vision. Just do your own. And that's it, man. Just have fun. So I have my personal page, but then also have my Facebook page. I treat them both the same. So if you you know follow one, you'll you'll see the same thing on the other. Um, and then on uh, Twitter is at Nightmage, and then Instagram is Nightmage One. Believe me, I'm saying anybody, anybody type. It's all acceptable. It's all good. There's no such thing as not acceptable. But in my mind, your arms fit I perfectly. In I the got page. you. Take the compliment. Actually, you know, actually, that's Space Ghost, that- Coast, Coast. It is. Actually, what you just said is something that um, it took me a long time to, to kind of come to terms with. So when I first started cosplaying, um, a lot of people would suggest only black characters, you know, be like, oh, man, you should do Luke Cage. Ridiculous. Like, oh, oh, man, you should do, you know, like Steel. Um, oh, man, you know, you should do Black Panther or Blade. But, like, they really just want to see me do black characters. And I kind of thought, like, I, I can be whoever I want. Why do you want? Why do you want to see that? But it hit me that really... It's not because they really didn't want to see me do any other characters and or think I couldn't, but they really felt that I could portray their favorite character, Luke Cage, really well. And you know what I mean? Like they they had that much confidence in me that that, that I could actually bring what they they saw in their head to life. I really didn't take it as a dig. I mean, at first I did, but then I had to think, man, that's actually a compliment. Now I just get I get requests for anything and everything. If you were making your own universe, your own canon, your own character without referencing or the name Night Mage, where that actually came from is an original character I came up with. Do you remember a TV show called Who Wants to Be a Superhero? It was on sci fi, it was hosted by Stan Lee. Normal people who were doing their own superhero things. Mm-hmm. Like and they, and they would, they would, yep, they would all live in a house, and Stan Lee would like. Put them a on reality different show. Yeah, it was a reality show. Okay, you know, right. Season one happened and it was awesome. And then so I actually auditioned for season two. And so you just had to, you know, make a character and submit it and go audition, create the character Night Mage. And he was basically a cross between Doctor Strange and a Jedi Knight. So I went down, I auditioned in Washington, and then I got a call back. I went down and auditioned in Florida, and I got to be an alternate on the show. And of course, I didn't make the show, but that's where Night Mage came from. It was just a total original character. I didn't ever do anything with with the character. Here's the thing, oh, man. I, I, I don't I don't have a separate persona. Like what you see is what you get. If I wake up and I'm I'm having explosive diarrhea that day and I want to talk about it, everyone's gonna hear about it. Um, it's not a you know a personal thing and a and a professional thing. Nah, man. Like what you see is what you get. Actually, it's funny. I actually I did uh, wear RoboCop for the past few years. Our department puts on a uh, trunk or treat. It's close to five six thousand people show up. One year I wore Batman. I uh, wore RoboCop. Uh, one year more Ghostbusters this this past year, but I wore RoboCop for the for the department. I got to wear. That's kind of all I wanted to do is just wear my 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 badge on my RoboCop uniform. That's kind of awesome. We're we're I don't know, man. I, I've been in a weird headspace for the past. Like it took a while to actually for reality set in of exactly how like what we're actually going through, man. Like you know, would you ever be able to say that you you, know, you were living through a pandemic? Everything that's happened. I mean, and even just just politically in the past you know year and so just it's just been insane 
I've just I've seen so many people in, in bad spaces because of it and they don't know how to get out of the rut and stuff like that. And honestly, luckily I have cosplay for me. That's been my my therapy is, is just just sitting down and crafting and so I think that everyone does need to try and find their their outlet. I don't care what it is, man. Go to the gym or whether it's cosplay or whether it's writing, poetry, whatever it is. I don't know. But everyone I do believe needs to have some sort of outlet. You know, there's this thing in the creative world is that you hear the same thing from artists over and over again. If I only had a time to work on my creative stuff, if I just had more time. And then with this, you get more time than you possibly can right. imagine and you have some people like i'm spending as much time as i can being as creative as possible but you also have some people that are just like you know their way of dealing with it is shutting down and i think both possibilities are okay and everybody out there needs to just give themselves the leeway and the room to cope with this the best way that they can it's all okay if you're feeling down reach out to somebody and talk to them don't sit mm-hmm. there and be isolated. If you're feeling bored and in a rut, pull out that book and read the book you wanted to do or write the book you wanted to do. You know, like even if it's a shitty, terrible book, the process is what it's about. Like when you're in the process of making something, I personally feel like this cloud is lifted. I kind of go into a meditative state. I feel uplifted and happy afterwards. So I highly suggest that anybody out there, if you feel like you're in a rut, if you feel like you're having the groundhog day, get up, turn the electronics off, go create something, even if it's with whatever foul materials you have, mm-hmm. just make something. And, and honestly, really- even with I mean, specifically for cosplayers, I've been telling cosplayers this. I, I did so I did 40 costumes in 2020. And and typically, I mean that's my average, but Wait, how many costumes? 40. 40 costumes in a year? Yeah. One year, 40 costumes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how this isn't a profession for you. It seems like you should be making these for people in charge of a boatload of money. No, I don't know. I I like my stuff. I honestly, I mean, people will say, can you make this for me? Or can I buy this from you? I'm like, eh. I don't think people will like my stuff. I like my stuff. But I just don't think other people will like it. And then, then again, oh, also clearly, you wouldn't have been introduced as a subject on the very first episode if you did not like <laughs> the criteria that the guys at Project Nerd thought. They are blown away by the stuff you do. I am no. blown away by the stuff you do. So please don't downplay the quality of what you do, whether it's I, I, ten feet away or ten inches away. This is amazing stuff that you're doing. Oh, well, thank, thank you, thank like you. Yeah, I just renting out a whole costume store. You know what I mean? I, like, I, I just crazy. like making stuff for myself. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Well. It's, again, it, again, it's like my outlet. But um, you know, I, everyone's like, well, two, two things here. One, you know, would you ever pursue a career and like do movies or do like prop work and stuff like that? Not as a career, no. Because I mean, I'm 41 years old. Um, I've kind of made. But um, my career is in law enforcement, so I really want to finish that out. Um, that that profession is not really just a paycheck to me. Like there's there's aspects of that profession where I'm really my soul is invested in it. Even though as as broken as the system is, there's there's aspects I truly believe in, and I believe me being there is helping it in just in you know, a small way that I can. So I'm there. That's my that's it. So everything else is just totally on the side, and and then also. If I did it professionally, I wouldn't be able to give back through it. Everything I've done, every penny that I have made from from costuming, prints and, and, and any kind of commissions, if I do do a commission and give something away and they pay me or whatever, everything goes back to charity. You know, I mean, I've been able to raise almost close to $200,000 wow. in, in just different charities around the world. So if that's my profession, I wouldn't be able to give back through it too you know what i mean i will say as far as law enforcement thing i have friends that are law enforcement i've had guns pulled on me by police when i was a kid i've had had horrible experiences with cops i've also had very great experiences with cops i understand the whole system could be better and that's why we 
you know, when people say America, America, it's like what they fail to get is the best thing about America is that we always strive to do better. And that is true within law enforcement or the whole criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the people who you want in those positions are the people like yourself, the people who are doing it for the right reasons, not because it's like get back at their enemies or like it's just a job. It can't. It's one of those things that it cannot just be a job. It has to be right. a passion and you have to be there for the right reasons. Just like you wouldn't want a pilot getting up there going like, I hate my job. I'm going to fly a plane, you know, like, no, we're all in the plane with you. So yeah, I'm right. glad you're a sheriff. I'm happy that you're doing that job. You're a very inspirational individual. And I'm very happy that I got to interview you. Well, thank you. Well, I mean, that, the last that means a word. lot. Like uh, uh, that, that I, feel uh, yeah, like I don't know. Connected, to... connected to you, I saw your butt in some photos. <laughs> Look, if I hey, met you, you in person, you, I would. You, st you stared at my butt. You stared at it. I was. It's good. Uh, there's no shame in that. Okay, I'm that's 50. True. You're 41. I'm 10 years older than you. At this age, your body becomes a cylinder, right? Like I was talking to somebody just about this the other day. My ass. I used to have a great ass. It's become like a cylinder. I have no ass. I can't slip down. There's nothing to grip to. So you you're know? telling me that like I have nothing to look forward to. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the hope. Age. You didn't you needed me to tell you that? Like every day from now on, just slip down the slope of that Listen. butt becoming flat, your body becoming saggy, and everything. I will say, heart, like, all right. Any last words? I just, I just want to say thank you for having me on. Um, thank you to you and, and Project Nerd, and yeah, inaugural episode. That's awesome. I hope you know. I mean, listen, it's it's only going to go up from here. I don't care either way. I'm having fun, but I appreciate you being the first guest. <laughs> If you're somebody out there who feels inspired to be on another episode, contact me or the guys at Project Nerd. There's a whole bunch of stuff over there. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you for watching Infinite Spaghetti. If you like the show, please share, comment, subscribe, rate, review. Shows like this only exist with the constant support of its viewing audience. For great cosplay content and amazing podcasts, head over to projectnerd.com. That's project-nerd.com.